here is, as Katrina described, very complex. So the monkeys give you some examples of the complexity. Mm -hmm. uh, they're preyed on not by just one predator, but by several predators. And those include the, the big raptor birds, the, the harpy eagles, and some of the uh, big crested eagles that have big crests on their heads, as well as the different cats, and some of the bigger weasel types, like tyras. So there's, there's quite a complex interrelationship there that uh, we shouldn't forget about. And talking about just a food chain, a simple this eats that, species A eats species, species B, which eats species C, is, is not accurate because there are so many other interconnections in the system. So like mm -hmm. we said earlier, it's more like a spider web. The other species that we can talk about in canopies, would you name a few? Oh, there are so many of... different species. There's mammal, so many different mammal species like <laughs> sloths and tamanduas, which are anteaters, but I love that word tamandua. And there are, of course, the monkey species. But then, in addition to all the mammal species, there are millions of invertebrate species, like spiders and snails and ants and katydids. And then there are the reptile species, like iguanas. So there are many, many different kinds of animals, and they are all interconnected in that they are prey species, some are prey species, some are predator species, they all depend on the plants uh, that are being produced up at the top of the canopy, and those plants are just so, so important to each and every one of the species. And those plants thrive on the sunlight, but they also have a high price to pay because they are so close to the top that they have to survive under drier conditions, and they also have to deal with a lot more heat than the species that are lower down in the forest. I love the monkey species, but I think of all the species that I have seen in the forest canopy, my very favorite is the tamandua. It is an anteater, and I've been fortunate enough to see it actually going for food. It eats termites and other ants, and it eats lots and lots of termites and ants. So if you didn't have all those invertebrates in the forest, then the tamandua wouldn't have a food source. Um, and it is just so exciting to watch the tamandua eat and put its snout into the hole of the tree and pull out the, the different termites and the, the ants. And we also, oh, something I completely forgot about, and there are so many of them. We already mentioned that they're the most dominant mammal species on, um, on BCI, and that's the bats. There are bats found, again, at every level of the forest, but there are many bats that live up in the canopy of the forest. This is a, a fabulous bat. It's, uh, it's called Vampyrops, and it um, feeds low down in the forest. It's uh, got this fabulous set of ears for hearing the prey moving around. And it's a big bat. It's uh, a good size. As bats go, it's quite large. So and it preys upon what? Uh, small mammals, birds, and um, small reptiles. It'll feed on lizards, too. I'm going to show you some other animals that live in canopy. This is an anteater. That's the one I was talking about, the tamandua. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Notice the long snout. There's a long sticky tongue inside there. And this is called a vested anteater because it has that pattern on its uh, uh, front and back that looks like it's wearing a formal black vest. When, when an anteater uh, is surprised at its uh, dinner time and it's got its head stuck into a log <laughs> with its nose buried into, in, a, in a termite nest, lapping up all those termites and very busy, you can actually walk up behind one and surprise it. And they, when they realize that you're there, they rear up and, and sit back and then they stand up and they lash their tail to a nearby branch or log because right. they have a prehensile tail like monkeys do. And they stand up and they raise their claws and they have huge claws. They're about two inches, two and a half inches long. They raise those claws and they hold them out and they threaten. And they're that's their de defensive that, that's position. The, yes. <laughs> now, envision this animal that's only this tall, though, doing that to 
try to frighten us, and it, it's, it's, it's just funny. It's pretty comical, yeah. yes. Yeah, it's really I, funny. You can go to our website, the Rainforest Connection website, which is rainforest.montclair.edu, and see videos of t uh, tamanduas, that's the, the vested anteater, tamandua, T-A-M-A, D-U-A is the, the local name for that species. And we have uh, a journal entry called Tamandua Days that Ooh. describes encounters with tamanduas. This is a canopy species that's also um, very particular about living up high in the canopy. And it's called a mountain squirrel. And this, this animal lives in cloud forest in a tropical rainforest that's cool. So there are cool tropical forests as well as warm ones, and this is a, a special rare species that's found there. And what does this little squirrel eat? This squirrel is eat, feeding right there on what we think it's feeding on is sap from, the, uh, from this tree branch. And they scrape the bark off the branch and then they lick at the sap. Uh, but it's very hard to tell exactly what they're feeding on. They also feed on the buds of flowers. Very unusual diet. We have now a video of some monkeys that are found in this forest. This particular video shows a mama howler monkey with a little baby that's uh, got very pale fur. You can see how the tail grips the mom. These moms don't hold their babies. The baby has to hold on to mom. And so they they are strong little babies, and if they're not, they fall off and they die. Uh, so they're literally clinging on to dear life. Absolutely. So and you can see, I put this in slow motion so you can see better how they move around and how the baby can cling. Uh, howler monkeys are called howlers because they make a loud barking and uh, woofing noise that they use to scare off their competitors. And, they live in small groups that uh, compete for food. And they feed on leaves and some fruits. This one, this mom is feeding on the fruit of a cecropia tree. So she's up in the tops of the branches of this tree. And baby's and hanging on feeding too. And tell us about, you said earlier that they are very unique because they can eat leaves. Why is it that they can eat leaves? Yeah, that's, that's especially important uh, to a canopy species that it have a good source of food that's digestible, or for any species for that matter. But this particular species can feed on leaves because it has a large intestinal area. The intestines have bacteria that digest the leaves and turn those leaves into sugars that the animal can use for energy. And then here we've got that fourth species that I had on my list, the tamarins. The tamarins are these small squirrel-sized monkeys that have no prehensile tail. They've got a long straight tail that they use for balancing, uh, very much the way a circus performer can balance on a tightrope. And they uh, are very beautiful little animals that live in small groups, two or three. The uh, social groups of the different species of monkeys are different. And this, these, this particular kind is also very curious about people. They uh, make a, uh, a, no a lot of different kinds of noises, and they use those noises to communicate with each other. And when you're standing in the forest, like I do so, so often, and I hear a sound like that, that is the sound that a tamarind makes. And that tamarind call is how I see tamarinds. But they usually see me first, and sometimes they come down and they squeak at me like that, and they sing songs, and I have no idea what it is all about.